We are jumping down so far right now and a couple rabbit holes throughout this Talk episode. <laughs> it is. It is. And next week's going to be just as fun. Let's jump to the ACC. We were just talking about the Seminoles in the end of undefeated Florida State team. The ACC title game, Louisville, after the loss to Kentucky last week. God, that sucks. Um, they might have, I mean, they probably wouldn't get in, but they'd be sitting with one loss, kind of poking the bear a little bit, be like, hey, let me in, right? Louisville, Florida State. Florida State has fallen to a two and a half point favorite, 7 p.m. on ABC Saturday night. What are our thoughts on this one? This line, I think it fell from four and a half to two and a half. People saw Florida State last week kind of get into a grinder against a rival in the swamp. Now we got Louisville who's coming off a loss. Maybe they're a little more motivated. What are we thinking? I, in most spots, I, I really like Florida State. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, in Louisville's two losses to Pitt and Kentucky, they turned the ball over three Pitt. times. So there's – there's your your Josh Pate padlock set. Like, if you're gonna want to win the football game, you can't turn it over three times, Louisville. So if they don't do that, they're definitely going to be within that number, and it's gonna be close. I really love Florida State's defensive line. I think it's one of the more underrated units in college football. They rank in the top ten nationally in sacks, and I think they'll get after Plummer, which can force some turnovers, whether it be a quick uh, pick or maybe they get a strip sack because they have tendencies to fumble the football. I just, I don't know. It's it's a really tough spot to put that young kid in at, at the quarterback position in your second start to go to the college football fucking playoff. Like, there's a lot of pressure on that. But luckily, he, he does have the weapons to rely on. And I think, I don't think they have to score 30 points to beat Louisville. I think they can honestly, they can get to 24 and they'll be okay. I think Florida State's defense is definitely good enough to hold Louisville. That's so that's my prediction. I'm going to take Florida State spread. Parks it, it, is what Florida State team am I getting? Because I think back and yes, they had a big piece in Jordan Travis, but I just think I keep thinking of that team that ran on the field and played Boston College. And you want to talk about a scrappy team led by a, the scrappiest coach in Jeff Brom that will roll in and win at the most crazy times. And JP, you've experienced it firsthand. What what a spot. Right. I, I don't know if I can buy into the Florida State hype. I get it. They're very good. They've earned everything they've gotten to this point. But they have debatably the ugliest wins next to Alabama while being good. Like they haven't dominated any of these games. Nobody would have been dead shocked if they would have lost last week. So I don't know. I really don't. I would love to see Louisville scrap this and just eliminate this Florida State team just because I think there's better teams that deserve a spot. Like just on paper and talent-wise, better teams over Better teams post-Jordan Travis. Correct. Yeah. That I would like to see in that fourth spot. I don't know if it happens. I think the line's in a great spot. I'm going to take Louisville plus a two and a half. I think they win it outright and create havoc. Okay. Perfect, Reese. How about you? I think if they, I think if they win, I think they, I think they create havoc. I think if Louisville wins, they make it easy, and just Florida State's out. We don't got to worry about that. I guess, yeah, whatever. I, I think but it I opens think, the door I think for that a lot. Havoc would be like who would replace them? I think kind of what yeah. Parks is. Well, there. and I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah, because you're gonna have you're gonna have a one loss team get there. Yeah, yeah that right, takes right. a guarantee out of the equation. Yeah, I can't get right, over that right. Louisville lost a pit. I when he said pit, it's I got so bad. Pit. I don't get Dude, it. Last week. They got outgained, or they outgained Kentucky by like 150 yards, yeah. and they had like double the amount of plays, and they lost it. They home. they so played Kentucky, really Ray well for the Lizzie. first. Ray yeah. Davis was a stud. Ray Davis was a stud. Yeah. That it for, just doesn't make sense in my head how you lose to that pit team of all teams. I mean, you want that's a New Year's Day level hangover game after Notre Dame and what they looked like. Yeah, they were rough. Um, I'm going to take Florida State here in the two and a half. I think a lot of it comes down to kind of what Schaefer was saying is I think uh, verse and a lot of those guys on the Florida State defense can create turnovers. Um, Louisville, I, I've been on that train the whole year. I think they were worth the hype and I think they got the schedule and they outside of the pick game like we were talking about took advantage of it. They have talent and Jawar Jordan uh, and guys on the outside, but I just I just think after what Florida State saw last year or last week and experienced what they did last week. It's just a little bit of a wake up call. Alarm clock went off in their head. I think they know they have to step up a little more. A lot of those nerves are now gone for that kid. I know it's a bigger stage, but does it really get more tough to play in Charlotte, North Carolina in a neutral site than it did in the swamp last week? 
I would argue last week was a tougher situation for him to jump into. So the I'm going to take Florida State. The championship game is so lame, and it's always like half sold out depending yeah. on who's going. Reese? Is this the Dr. Pepper game, the chess pass to football? I no, thought they did that in all 12. of them. It's the Big, that's 12. big 12. Okay. That's Big 12. Chess pass to football. Right. Okay. Do they anyway, do that in each please. semifinal? I don't know. Okay. Reese. Yeah. I mean, I never really got to get my pick. We just, we just, I, I went on tangent, but sorry, man. Um, sorry, man. No, you're good. It happens. We're, hey, we're the boys. We run this show. We can do whatever we want, guys. It's okay. Our own show, man. Um, <laughs> but, my, but my thing, too, about when you're looking at the two is Rotomaker. Yeah, it's his second game. But it's like when you talked about McCord at the beginning of the year, when you have Trayvon Henderson and Marvin Harrison to throw the ball to, you'll be okay. This guy's got Trey Benson, and then he's got Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson to throw the ball to. Like, he'll be okay. He just got to be serviceable. I think they can win this we, game just fine. We I, I don't, I don't really, and, and that defense is fine. I I think they can win this game no problem. I just want to give an underrated shout out to Jaheim Bell too because we say, always Jaheim like Bell's to highlight. Animal. We like to highlight those three, but he always goes under the radar. So that dude is to, a freak athlete. Animal. Him and Amari Nyblack are two of my favorite tight ends to watch in the whole country. They are explosive. They're built like Mack trucks, and they can run. Like it's just they're a ton of fun to watch. Um, side note again, but. That'll be a ton of fun to watch. I think the whole most of the country will be cheering against Florida State just based on the situation throughout the rest of the country and what happens because it's a night game. We'll know for the most part, right, on what's happened. Um, so pending those results, I think a lot of the country will be on uh, throwing their L's up and cheering for the cards. Let's jump.